Hi everyone, I'm Fanola Howard and I've got another wonderful expert on our panel of experts to share with you today. And this wonderful, wonderful expert is Carrie Eddins. And she is, I think she's more than PR. She would say she's a media expert. She's a PR uh, support person, PR advisor, PR strategist, but she's just she sees into the heart of things and actually helps you reach the people you need to reach in a PR or publicity context. But I also think she's a lot more than that. And again, I reiterate this that I've said a few times already, and that is that I chose people on this panel that had a connected view of business and of business in the world that we work in and we live in and how everything works together to get you to where you want to go. And that is Carrie, and I am delighted to introduce her to you. So, hey, Carrie, how are you today? Oh, wow, what a lovely introduction. <laughs> I really touched, I'm really well, thank you, Fanola. Fantastic. Will you share with everyone, tell us just a bit about yourself and what you do and how you can help people. So, um, so what I really do is, uh, yeah, I mean, I... I am under the umbrella of publicity, but I do reach into people's hearts. So I can, so if somebody says, I do this, I can, I know emotionally and instinctively who would they be best to work with. I've always been able to do this. It's just that I suppose over the last few years, I've taken these gifts seriously and channeled them into PR because mm -hmm. PR is like the ultimate supercharger to grow somebody's business, their authority, their thought leadership and, you know, their visibility and so I typically work with, I suppose they tend to be a bit rebellious, the women I work with, some men as well, and they're definitely pretty ambitious. They really wanna make a mark in the world with whatever they're doing. And I help them to do that really. Um, I'm quite unorthodox in how I work. So I work very intuitively. I'm not like this standard sort of pushy, pushy PR person. I'm not using logic most of the time I'd say never I'm just feeling opportunities out and matching people together so you know it's but not I'm going to interrupt you I'm going to interrupt you because you're underselling yourself I know that's a really the passionate part of you but I also know you're extremely pragmatic in how mm -hmm. it works that you are results focused and the reason I know this is because I came to carry for advice and she just she's just very true in how she gives advice and points people in the right direction and she has uh, opened up doors for me in terms of writing and all the rest of it and has helped me prepare myself for the next step for my own business which I'm going to embark on next year as you probably all guess at this point and that can't be understated also oh. sorry for interrupting <laughs> I don't really see myself as pragmatic but I suppose I see what you mean, because some people come to me and they say, oh, I want to be on TV tomorrow. And I'm like, uh, have you been on your local radio? So I, I kind of bring them back down to earth in some ways. I say, look, you know, you don't, If I mean, it's nothing's ever impossible. But I always say, if you want to go on TV tomorrow, you need to understand how the media works. And it works very differently to what it did like five years ago, 10 years ago, you know, 20 years ago, some people come to me and they've done PR in the 80s and 90s. So you've got to, it's, it's one PR is one of those things where you really want to know how it works, what the rules are, what you're dealing with, because you want to make the most of the opportunity so that you don't publicly fall on your derriere. Not there's anything wrong with that, but we want to have the want to put you in the best possible position so that you can leverage that opportunity to your advantage instead of looking a bit silly. So I always say it's best to build up your confidence and build up your experience and then go for the bigger places. So unless you are really clued up on how things work but even then I still would say incrementally is better with the media because it's just so much more at stake I mean you can go from being seen and heard by hundreds of people in your Facebook group in a Facebook group to like hundreds of thousands of people like that or you know sometimes a couple of million I mean really it, it just supercharges so that means that your best parts and your worst parts are seen so it's best to do it slowly but surely is is my advice and also, I, I'll also share this, that in our conversations together, that you talked about, are you ready for this, Fanola? And I remember saying, not yet. <laughs> but I'll get there. 
Yeah. And I think that's, I, I mean, I think you're the only PR person I've ever worked with that has ever said that to me. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. But also really useful, I think for members of this program that you have someone who will be vested in your growth, helping you at the right time. And they'll give it to you straight with a heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to delude people because it's kind of, we all suffer from our own delusions, don't we? We're like, we can be on TV tomorrow. And even myself, Anola, I actually was on national radio in, in the UK earlier this year. And and I, I remember sort of, and like, I always advise people to write on post-it notes what you're going to say, because when it actually happens live radio, you could just get overexcited or you can lose, you, you just kind of get be intimidated. And I was, and I lost it. <laughs> And even though I've written everything down, I, bit, I turned into this giggly teenage schoolgirl, and I completely—I was just like, ah! and I, I just—and but the point is, I did it, and I tried, and it, but it made me realise how easy, and that was a microsecond, and I didn't lose business over it. In fact, I gained business, but because I was showing people that actually, I'm putting myself in a position of doing it. But yeah, it made me realise that it's so easy to just kind of miss it. You know, so it's these micro micro moments that we want to kind of practice and then it becomes easier. So well, this is a good time now to ask you that question. I think that's a really good segue into when is the right time for someone to tap into your expertise? When what's happening in their heads or what's their trigger that they'll say, now it's time for me to talk to Carrie. Well, first of all, it might be an idea to, for me to define what I believe publicity in 2019 and beyond and obviously in the next decade is and it is part opinion sharing and part storytelling mm. so in previous years it's definitely just been mostly about story but now because of the interactive world we live in it is definitely opinion sharing and the opinion sharing is so much more responsive because we're obviously we're on we're interactive now with social media and every new story breaks on Twitter. So the interactivity of Twitter has made everything faster, um, for example, because that's when the media hang out on Twitter. When somebody is ready, the signs of when somebody is ready to work with me is usually that they've got regular income coming in. They've got a, like a stable business. I, I, don't, I don't really advocate newbies working with me because unless you, you've got a rhythm to your business, like I've said just a few moments ago, publicity will supercharge it so if you haven't got a rhythm or you haven't got you can't cater for a sudden rush of clients or a sudden um, you know um, increase in your email list or demand for you then you would just fall it would just crash and burn mm. um, I, what a lady I worked with a few years ago she was she got a gig on national tv and then people who were watching tried to buy her book and they couldn't because the shopping cart wouldn't work so I don't want to put you, I would never advocate putting you in that position. So we always say that you want certain things in place. And one of the things is definitely uh, before you think about working with me or reaching out to have a, have a, a you know, one-to-one, -one, have a business that's working. You don't need to be making hundreds of thousands or anything like that. Just have it working and having regular income. Um, I would say you, you at least need to have at least 20 written blog posts I know a lot of people are really into vlogging, you know, video, um, video blogging. That's really good. If you are going to do that, make sure you have a transcription next to your video because the media like to scan things really fast. They have to respond super fast. And the quickest way for them to take in information, it's not listening or watching. It's actually reading. So they scan right. information. So at least have like 20 written blogs, which showcase different things about you, not just case studies but your opinions about what's going on in your industry or the world um some personal posts if you've got those things going on then and you're ready to grow and you understand how the media works i mean i could you know share some a few uh tips about how the media work because well, let's do that as our last piece of conversation that would be great last, yeah but once you know those things but you're ready to grow and you're ready to be seen on a on the next level so you know by could be tens of thousands more people then then reach out to me and it it doesn't need to be the classic sign for people is that i've got a book coming out carrie news flash alert the media i'm not that bothered about whether you've got a book coming out it's what your book can do for their audience so and sometimes it's about 
So let's say you've got a book about like resilience, let's say an example. That could be segued into pretty much any media, but you've got to think about their audience. So if the audience were like stay at home moms, how would your book about resilience help them? So you'd have to tailor tips when you're pitching say to a radio show about, you know, here's three, you know, we could have a discussion about resilience. Here are three tips that I would recommend for your readers. And then at the end, they might discuss your book. But often the best book, book publicity is around the issues of the book, not just directly the book, which break, breaks people's hearts a bit. It's just that there's so many books coming out. And you, I always say you want the book wants to be the last thing. We want to get them talking about you. And then they'll go, oh, and then you can say, oh, by the way, I've got a book coming out. And they love that because they're like, you're not being that pushy, out of date salesperson. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so then, so they should okay so this is good advice and let's kind of recapture it now i like that you said not to talk to you until you're ready for that jump and that's and being prepared that you have a solid business it's not about it's not about them having an enormous business it's about it being in steady flow regular income yeah. good advice good advice and also this uh, next piece which is that whole book thing it's about them and this is when we talk about customers all the time anyway walking in the shoes of your customers it's the same for media so you have to think of what that channel or what that reporter or what that uh, tv show wants their audience and how can you reach their audience it's not about you it's about them completely and utterly and that's the biggest mistake because I've, again i've spoken to loads of entrepreneurs this year and they've been like yeah but i've got I've got this many followers and I do this and I do that. And they're like, I'm like, they don't care. It's about how, what's in it for them. They actually don't care that you've got four books out, hundreds of testimonies. You've been doing it for nearly 20. They really don't care. They're like, yeah. And it's not, it's yeah, not it's like next. Yeah. But they're just like, really? <laughs> okay. It's great. It's great. Okay. So let us close on your three top three tips for entrepreneurs and they may be media tips what what works for you um i would say you need to, you need to understand that if you're wanting to do the media you've got to let go of control <laughs> which is brutal but it's true because like for example if somebody created a blog post on their website or a guest blog post somewhere else you have the ability to go back and edit it and change it when you're going to be in the media, when you're choosing to be open to being in the media, it's very rare that you have the opportunity to go back, for example, and ask them to change an article or you can't go back to the TV show so that millions of people can unwatch the particular show you're on or unlisten to the radio show. So I sort of playfully label being in the media as like the ultimate law of attraction game. So you go, this is what I want. You put yourself in a position whether it's um, being coached by me to help you to get there or hire me or whatever it is, but then you have to let go because when it happens, when you, when the media go, yes, Fanola, we'd like to quote you in the Irish times or whatever it is, you cannot control the process. So you, you have to kind of surrender and um, allow them to come to you. And so surrender and, and, and sort of letting go of control, I feel is like really important. But I, I also share this from having done some of these interviews and stuff that don't get scared by that because they can see some, they can, so it can have a negative, but we presume there isn't a negative, okay? Because I don't want people to be scared of PR, oh, but I know from experience of that interviewing process and all of that, that sometimes they'll see a spin or make you look deeper and actually can show you better than you would have shown yourself. Definitely, definitely. And, and also really get really um, understand that even if they didn't set, show you in the best possible light, it's still, you know, it's still like your competitors are here and you're like here when you're in the media. It's still your authority. People take you far more seriously. I've got clients who have actually doubled or tripled their speaking fees because they've been in quoted in particular media. They've, they've increased their mailing list. People who've been hesitant to work with them suddenly see them in Forbes or the Irish times or the independent Irish independent. And they, you know, they've been headhunted by the TV. They've been, um, people have signed the dotted line to start coaching with them. People have bought their books. 
because it's quite it, it, it is on another level being in the media it, it, it can be a bit scary but at the same time it's that it, it's 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 a magnet to drawing people to you who want to work with you i love it so that's number one don't be afraid of the control number two and number three carrie number two and number three um i suppose i am going to the media when you're thinking about going into the media it's not about where you want to be it's about where your ideal clients are mm. <laughs> which people find a bit like really and because it, it's not about you so your message is more important than the medium so your clients might be reading you know um i don't know, they could be reading the daily mail or they could be reading the irish times you might not be reading it but they are so and that and some of you might not know what what media your clients are consuming so you might need to ask them and that's actually covered in our program about understanding where your clients are you have got to be where they are so yeah absolutely great piece of advice you do have to be where they are um i think the final piece of advice would be and i suppose this feeds into my whole brand as well but would be that don't try and be perfect so right now I think we're going into we, we started to go into this whole place in the world where blonde is the new big so by that i mean like you know we are just we just can't take in so much more information so you need to be conveying speaking from the heart a lot more not your head you need to be using your personality especially as a small business you know that is what stands you out so whether you're in the media or you're creating a new product or service your personality and your your trademark characteristics are things that will help you stand out more than anything because bigger companies just have their legal departments take months for them to make changes you can do it in a microsecond because you are your legal department you are your marketing department you're everything so really um play up to that and use your imperfection your humanity your personality and your trademark in every bit of communication that you have and and if you can take it the next level which is what I, I mean, I did it a long time ago, but I'm starting to bring it back because I, you know, I'm human and I sort of was like, really? But I've decided it, I've done it. So I use language like, you know, um, walking the blonde line or blonde spotting or having a blonde moment. And I'm bringing, and, and you know what? As much as I've been criticised by it, actually more people have gone, actually, that's quite good, you know, because it's standing me out. So if you can take it next level and create your own language around your brand, that's going to help people remember you because at the end of the day it's a way of actually i wrote about this recently it's yeah. a way of expanding your signature it's, it's completely that it's completely that yeah yeah that's very interesting very good people's attention because people's attention is scarcer than ever it's gone down hasn't it i don't know about you finola but i'm reading all day and i and i'm like my brain is like i can't take in any more information but if you're memorable and you make me laugh i'm there if you make me laugh that's that you win me every single time you make me laugh absolutely yeah fantastic fantastic okay so now you guys know how wonderful it would be to work with carrie <laughs> because she'll set you straight and it will be and that's this pragmatic piece like that straight shooting carrie that will actually help people see what they need to do and i think that you i think you should talk to carrie one of your expert panels sessions must be with Carrie. <laughs> okay, so check her out in our expert panel and um, you won't regret it. It will make a difference to you. Thank you so much, Carrie. You're very welcome. I'm very honoured to be part of your expert panel. I think oh, it's right. really rewarding and, and great fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. You're unstoppable. You're unstoppable.